and uh, hello everyone, and welcome to the stream. Thank you for everyone that's uh, joined today. All right, um, let's continue. Uh, continue. Let me see here. All right, and um, it's been a while since I played this. Um, let me pull something up real quick. Uh, one thing I like that I did last stream was I had a to-do list, so I'm gonna do that again. So I felt like it was a lot more um, organized than um, just doing this uh, improvised. So um, one of the things I wanted to do um, a couple streams ago was to set up my logistics better because um, I've started to have. At this point, I have like several production buildings going on. Like I have, um, you know, the Cactus Workshop for um, medicinal powder, advanced tailor for clothes, tools, uh, coffee. Um, a lot of stuff is going on and it's kind of all just spread out throughout the entire thing, which is um, not really the most efficient way to do things. Like in the beginning, like since I didn't have um, some of these logistics buildings yet, like the delivery station and uh, supply terminals, um, just having things close to where production's coming from works um, for in the beginning part. But right now, I want to move past that, you know. Um, this time, I want to build a delivery station. Um, I already have like a pretty um, determined area. I'm going to build a uh, delivery station like right in this area right here. And I'm going to be relocating a lot of these um, production buildings in that area and I'm gonna like you know you get to actually see me live set up one of the production um, districts I have um, that I've you know you've probably seen if you watch some of my uh, other videos on YouTube like the logistics videos um, you've probably seen me like already have a set up production district going on so we're gonna actually do that a new one from scratch so the first thing we're going to want to do here is um, obviously build the delivery station which is going to t uh, cost us a tech point but that's okay since we have enough uh, tech going on so let's unlock this real quick um, but another thing we're going to need is to re uh, the building requirements to even um, to construct one um, the delivery station over here it requires 40 building kits, a little bit of steel, and some rope. And I guess I already have steel and some rope. Oh yeah, we're, we're producing our rope. I, I just remembered that. And um, I don't have any building kits yet. So I am going to go ahead and I'm probably going to buy that instead of uh, producing. Instead of producing my own building kits, I'm going to go ahead and um, use a trading caravan to get that. Um, let me see if there's anything else. A couple, another thing I want to get is, um, later on I have a plan to get a police station. Um, one thing that's going on here is as the settlement is, um, developing over time. Um, one thing that you're probably familiar with is your population going through, um, death spikes or death waves, you know, there's different uh, terminology has been used throughout you know the forums but like basically you have like a lot of people being born and then suddenly you just have a lot of people dying off and I feel like I'm starting to experience that right here I'm kind of running low on labors that I'm comfortable with and um, when I was um, practicing this just the other day I was kind of experiencing like my population um, starting to die out uh, later on so to just Another thing I want to do set up here is a police station so I can show you my way of dealing with those population spikes. Um, I'm not sure if I have... Yeah, I'm going to need cut some cut stone for that. That's why. So I'm going to try to make a large um, caravan order in the beginning so I can get the materials I need to, to construct these buildings. I want to. Um, and there's one more thing. That's going on here. This mine is actually running very, very dangerously low. It's at 4% inventory, which means 
once this hits zero, this mine will be dry. And that's it. I'm not going to be getting uh, any more resources out. So it was the first mine I built a couple episodes back. So it's finally time to upgrade this as well. Which is going to cost another tech. So we're going to need this one, the exploration technology. If you scroll down, you will get the open mine, which it's a mine that can be built in the in the flat ground area. And then the senior mine is the upgrade. It's a, um has greater reserves than the last one. So that we are going to need um we're gonna to need to get some planks, some more cut stone. And lamp oil is what I need. So, to go back and to get delivery station, I'm going to need 40 building kits. And then I'm going to need 120 lamp oil. So let's let's get that started here. Let's go up to the caravan. Form a caravan. And I'm going to trade with Lorenzo because I want to get Lorenzo's... Um, up to level three so I can get the hardwood pasture unlocked. So we already have the dense farm unlocked and I want to get the hardwood pastures now to upgrade well my pasture so we can get more um increased yields out of this. So Lorenzo, let's buy some items. So the first one was oh yeah cut stone here. I think um I think the police station was twenty and then the mine was 80, so that's 100. So let's get 100 real quick. Wait, why did I just type 100 up there? Oh, go away. Cut stone. It's uh, 100 cut stone. And then building kits. Building kit. It's going to be 40. Lamp or lamp oil. It's going to be 120. All right, so now we have the materials of uh, 100 cut stone, 40 building kits, 120 lamp oil. It's going to cost us about 3,000, which is pretty affordable considering how much we have. 51,000 right here. Uh, real quick, let's see if there's anything I can sell at the moment. Um, food. I don't have any fancy foods. Planks, linen. I don't really see anything I can really, really sell. And that is another thing I want to do in this uh, episode of stream. Is hopefully by the end, once I have the um, production district set up, I'm going to start, um, start producing my own trade items. I, I like uh, starting off with porcelain, which is used with the pottery. We have a trade. Um, you can upgrade, well not upgrade, but you can unlock the pottery, the pottery workshop. And you can use clay to um, build trade items. Well, not to like produce trade items. And I like to use uh, porcelain. So, um, because it's, you know, all my other streams and um, previous episodes, I've been only relying on the, um, the traveling merchant. So I kind of want to step away from that. I mean, like, look how far the traveling merchant got us. But it's time for us to start producing our own trade stuff and make our own money. Especially since I want to level up Lorenzo. So let's make our own form of money and increasing our reputation. So I don't think at the moment I have anything. Maybe some extra iron tools. How much am I consuming a year? Oh, less than 100. I can afford to sell off 30. Just something. Just a, just a small amount of profit. Well, not a profit. It's still under that, but you know what I mean. Just so I can make a little bit while we're at it. I think that's it for now. Um, Later on, we'll start uh, selling off some more goods. Six members, buy insurance, cut stone, building kit, lamp oil. I think that's what we need right now. 3%. All right. And farm. Unpause this. And we just have to wait. Oh. Um, early, 
Ocean ship. Hopefully we can get something nice. Alright. Oh my god, seriously? <laughs> the, the merchant ship came with building kits. If I just waited literally 20 more seconds, I could have just bought the building kits right here. Wow, that kind of sucks. Um, Alright. Screw it. I'll, 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 I'll still get the building kits anyway. Um, besides, I have a lot of... um excess items here like um we've been producing a lot of soybeans because of the dense farm so we're gonna use some of the soybeans that i have in here to buy some of the the building kits since might as well technically freeze is not gonna cost me um silver it's gonna just cost me um trade items so building kits let's get like a hundred just in case i need them again later on two thousand that's not too bad um, I think we're good on bricks, gear, we don't need that. Domestic fuel. Hmm, we have the coal mine. I don't think we're gonna have a... If it was coal, it'd be a lot, um, better, since that coal mine is going to run out. But I think 500 um, domestic fuel might be a good backup plan. You know what? We, we have a lot of, uh, stuff we can, uh, trade with the caravan. So, like, let's just be, uh... Better safe than sorry, right? So let's do another 500 on domestic fuel. Total price is 3,500. So we can afford that. The rest I don't really need. Soybeans. How much will 5,000 get us? 2,000. Probably 7,500. Hi, Bonsai. Um, welcome to the chat. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining. Okay, so soybean 7,500, that's 3,000. I think 800 would be enough. Oh my god, that, that point four and soybeans really don't get you a lot. So you have to sell a lot of soybeans at a time just to get like any value out of this. Um, 9,000. Okay, 9,000 is a little too high. So let's just go with like 8,500 for now. And then we can hit make the difference and just spend 100 silver just to do the difference. So let's do... Buy that, double check, I'm gonna be getting 100 building kits and 500 domestic fuel. Alright. Again, that really sucks that I didn't wait 20 more seconds. I didn't realize there was a merchant ship coming right from the start of the stream. But that's really unfortunate that I had the building kits when I just sent the caravan to go get me some. But if anything, actually, you know what? At least that saves us the wait. We don't have to wait for the caravan to come back um, with the stuff anymore. I should already have the materials I need for the delivery station. All right, so yeah, let's spend the tech here. Activate. And then... So, hopefully I can, you know, get it pretty close as I did um, a little off camera just for practice here. I got the delivery station and I built it like around here because let me slow this down a bit um I choose I chose this area up here because it's kind of like in the center of things uh Hayes KTK Hayes hello hi and uh, thank you for joining the chat um I hope I um Hope I said the name right. I need glasses. Actually, I have glasses. So at first, I thought your name said Kick Haze, but then I'm like, oh, that's a T. But <laughs> sorry about that. Um, as I was saying, um, so yeah, the delivery station. I'm gonna have it up here since it's kind of like in the center-ish area of this. Like, I mean, obviously we have the marketplace in the middle here, and I don't wanna. I don't want that area to overlap this because this is where I want the residential um, buildings to stay here. So I was also debating either up there or down here um, where the hunter, the hunter's hut is. But if I do that, most of it's on the river. Like a good portion of it's going to be on the river. So the one spot I found that was kind of decent was up here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, like the layout. 
as as settlement like develops, you know, I can always move buildings around so they can like my roads can like perfectly line up. But at the moment, this is fine. I'm just gonna pop it there, and I'm going to start building um, more of these production buildings out here, and I'm gonna start building them around the um, the coverage zone. Um, mostly in the bottom here. God, I still gotta keep things close to the center here. So I'm gonna build most of the production buildings down here on this area. That way it's still close by to, um, the homes here. And I'm actually gonna start building more homes here as well. So all my workers in this area have a nearby place to go home and rest. So, I just wait on that. Speed this up again. How many, um, let's increase the builder's cabin to six just to speed things up a bit. And the mine is about to run out. It's at 1%. So hopefully the caravan can, um, get here soon. It's got quite a ways to go. Over a hundred days left. So hopefully they get here quick because our coal production is about to run out. Okay. And so far we've been doing good with managing... Okay, one second. Merchant from the north. A caravan from the north passed by and their drinks were running out. They wanted to exchange their goods for some spirit. Our hardwood uh, tools are strong and durable. Oh, okay. So, yeah. They want to, tr uh, to trade beer and we'll get actually... We'll, we'll get hardwood tools. That's, that's kind of cool. And we have enough beer to make the trade. Let's do it. Um, so let's, and we got a hundred hardwood tools. If this was earlier in the game when I didn't have my silver coins, I actually would have just banned the item and then just sell it off. But you know what? Financially, we don't really need the silver that bad. So we're act I'm actually going to let my settlers keep the hardwood tools and it should give them a small health bonus. He says, uh, when do you switch to simple food and what do you go for first? Um, so the simple food thing is something I'm trying to do in the settlement. Um, every, every stream I'm like, okay, next we'll try to do simple food. Um, so one thing about switching from rough to food, the one thing you gotta, um, be prepared for is actually having enough rough food or raw food um to go into simple because when you start going into simple production and start banning all of the items that go into simple you might actually run out because as you know like simple processing raw food into simple foods cost a slightly more um resources and you get like a little bit less and it takes a lot of food to feed everybody like with soybeans for example um i was about to say um soybeans on, on the graph right here it usually shows you how much you produce and how much you consume right now because i just sold off a lot of soybeans at the dock this number is a little skewed so this example kind of just screwed me a bit uh, normally in the recent years of uh, soybeans i'm consuming about four thousand but this number is this high because i just traded about eight thousand at the dock and that actually the game reads it as cons consumption but the point is like if it even takes four thousand a year for soybeans to feed people like four thousand soybeans just to feed people in one year so so simple foods you're going to be pr producing at least four thousand simple foods just produce it's the same thing so to to get that you're going to need a lot of simple fruit production so you always have to make sure you have enough raw food in overabundance so you can afford to start slowly making your way into production producing simple foods as you do that you know you have to have a lot of buildings um in this playthrough i actually have the vegetable processing plant this is only producing 600 almost 700 a year that is not even close to 4,000 so theoretically I would have to get a lot more 
I would have to build a lot more processing plants to keep up with demand. But this number is this low also for another reason. Um, I'm struggling to keep up with um, raw materials. Like I need pumpkins and other vegetables just to produce. This thing, it only has two workers. And um, if I had like more workers in there and more constant supply of vegetables, this simple um, or this single vegetable processing plant would produce a lot more. So that's another thing you want to do. So step one, I guess, would be have a lot of raw food. So you can have that as a backup when you're starting to switch to simple. And number two, you have to really start getting the most out of your processing plants to really produce enough for everybody to eat. And you can do that with making sure everyone's working here. Um, it's getting enough resources to produce the food that they're doing. And even you can do a lot of remodel upgrades. Um, some of the things I like to do here is the new employee upgrade where you can get um, one more person to work at. So it's like instead of three, it'd be four. So now it's producing um, even more food. Or another one is economy, which re reduces how much resources are needed to make um, the certain item. All of this combined will boost how much you can make from a single plant. Because at the same time, you don't want a bunch of little buildings just to um, feed your people. If you can do it with the least amount of buildings, that's like the most efficient way. So <sighs> TLDR, there's a lot of steps you have to take from making sure you have enough food of the lower tier. Um, to make sure your people don't starve and also just getting the most out of every building just to feed everybody enough simple foods to like make the full switch. I hope that um, answered your question. Um, Quintirius Quincy says tofu gang. Yes, um, I actually was thinking that that is on my to-do list. Um, hopefully I can do that in this video. Um, tofu, since I am using, um, soybeans, I could always use, um, not here, a mill processing. I can use the mill to process soybeans into tofu. And I can do that because I level up meow to at least level two. Um, right here, she gives you the recipe for tofu. Tofu is a fancy food. So that's another thing you can do. And, uh, hopefully I'll be doing that later on this, uh, this stream. TLDR is, uh, is it be able to... Uh, TLDR is be able to way overproduce your raw foods before you switch because you'll burn through it. Yeah, it's, um, you have to overproduce, uh, raw foods. And the same will apply for fancy foods. Same step. You'll have to overproduce, um, either simple foods to the point where you can have that to fall back on when the fancy food uh, runs out. So, same thing. It's a, it's a long series of steps, basically, but we're barely on year 28. Um, you can start seeing that kind of stuff, like probably year 50 or even 100, like going from full fancy food production. And yes, yeah, watching your population as a... a Materia says um, housing will kill it. So the more people, the more demand for food. So there's this balance of um, producing enough while keeping the population kind of stable. Because the more people means the more mouths you have to feed. But you have to really get the most out of what you have to keep that balance in check. All right, so the delivery station is finished. I just put it on pause right now. Um, just because I don't have any um, production buildings yet to start um, delivering items to. The mine just ran out. So that sucks. Our coal is completely depleted for now. Hopefully, how much more time is the trading post? Less than 100 days, so the, the caravan should be coming back with the lamp oil, so we can get, um, so we can upgrade our mine. Let's get our uh, laborers back, or the workers there back for now. Okay. 
And hey, so I'm glad my uh, answer helped you. And uh, thank you for the question. It's a, it's a good one to ask. All right, times 10. God, I swear, times 10 is not fast enough. I swear I thought it was at times 5. Um, okay, so next, now that we have the delivery station, which... Which production building should I move up first? Um, hmm. Okay, so this is what I like to do. Now that this thing's up, I almost forgot. I actually like to have a storage yard right underneath this. Or right next to the uh, storage building. I mean, the delivery building. And the reason why I like to have this little storage yard is this little place is going to serve as the location, the storage, where all of these workers here are going to drop their items off. Because, you know, you always have to, with production and, and everything, you always have to make sure every production building has a place to drop off their goods. You don't want them going um, long distances just to drop off their goods. Again, when you do that, production goes down. So this is going to be like a little small centralized place specifically for the buildings around here. And I'm really going to be able to enforce that because of the... Um, the filtering option you can do with the storages and you can even filter specifically by items now finally after like so many years they finally added that i've been trying to decide if you like a uh, centralized storage or not um i like it i like centralized storage but like only for production buildings or production district in general so like kind of small scale centralized so it's kind of it's going to be centralized for this area but it's not centralized for the entire settlement you know like these items are still going to they're going to still take items from here and bring it back to these other storages so they can use it this one is just centralized only for the production workers here to drop off their goods so they can keep working so nothing's done one thing i'm going to do the first thing i'm just going to unselect everything so currently, nothing can go into this right now. Because I don't want items coming from other places to oversaturate this. I want this one to be completely available to these workers. So. Transfer stations are another good alternative. But that's kind of the things with logistics and uh, settlement survival. There's no one way to do anything. There's so many countless layouts and strategies. Uh, this is just the one that I like to do. But yeah, transfer stations also work um, to move items out to other places. The caravan's coming back. Uh, the multitasking is real, so I'm realizing that. All right. Let's 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 see here. I'm going to build a road here just to extend this a little bit. And then... Um... Actually, I have, a, I have a better idea. Since I still have space here on this marketplace for houses to be built here, I'm going to start building a couple more houses here. That way I can get the, a better layout of how that's going to look like. I'm going to pause these buildings because I don't want these homes built just yet. That is just there to remind me how low or how far... Um, my production buildings can go when I built them. So, hey, I did. I didn't, I didn't do a bad job actually getting this pretty close to the the marketplace covered zone. Lining that up. Okay, so let's do this. Oof! Totally forgot about this tattoo that we got very very early on. Might have to relocate that. I'm just gonna do something like that for now. Actually, maybe I'll just remove that. Um, I'm going to start with some of these, um, I'm going to start with the 5x5 five five buildings, like the cactus workshop and the tea shop. Those are 5x5, five five, so I'm going to fit those nicely. Oh, and the veggie uh, plant is also 5x5, five five, so let's do that. Let's do one here, and then cactus here, and then tea shop. And I guess the devs still haven't fixed the, the entry on the tea shop 
being to the side, even though the front is this way. Hmm. Oh well. I'm just gonna have that like that for now. And then I'm also gonna give the back area some space. Just so I have room to expand. And any like 5x5 buildings, they'll be like in this little area. This is how I just like to set up. So the caravan is back. And... Alright. I see that um, my labor count went up. I'm not sure if that was because of the... No, my caravan is still out. I wonder if people uh, grew up. And... Oh yeah, people were... People were becoming laborers and graduating from school. That's good. I'm glad that we're getting more workers. Because we're going to need that. Let's speed this up a bit. Alright, now we got the lamp oil. Let's spend the tech here. Mining. Open mine. Senior. And upgrade. We have... We still don't have the planks. Oh no. I totally forgot to switch this. Alright, so we'll, we'll give this a second. How many planks do I need? 120. We'll do about uh, 150. So hopefully I can remember to check on the planks. Because if I don't... Ah! The coals... Our coal reserve is still not bad. It's still at 400. So honestly, I'm not too worried that it's going to run out. I think we'll be good. Alright, so the veggie plant is running. Let's uh, employ this real quick. And now that that's up, let's remove this one. We don't need that one anymore. Same with the cactus workshop. It was medicinal powder. And let's have a few people again. And let's demolish that. Mm, what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to start um, filtering what items can go here. So this one, when they're done, they're going to be producing ve veggie salad. So I'm going to tell this storage right here, uh, veggie, to accept veggie salads. And I'm going to also tell it to accept medicinal powder. So I'm going to this. No. Oops, I misspelled it. It should be under household goods. Here it is. I am... Whoa, that's... I am... Do you? <laughs> Sorry about butchered that. Thank you for um, joining. I had immigrants. Is that what happened? <gasps> Thank you for telling me. I totally forgot that I had um, automatic uh, admission for immigrants. Thank you for that one. That explains why, like, suddenly I had, like, a boost in, uh, levers. Yeah, I'm not used to that. Um, Settlement Survival did not always have the auto-accept feature, and I must have turned it on in the last stream, so thank you for that. Coffee. So let's accept coffee here. Okay, so for now... Um, there's only three, uh, foods that are, three items that are allowed to be put in here. Veggie salad, um, veggie salad, uh, medicinal powder, and coffee. Let's see if I can find them. So it's, um, medicinal powder and coffee. So those three are the only items that are checked. So, they will... Be the only ones that can use that storage. Alright, so what are the other ones I have to use? Oh, let's get rid of the tea shop. Since we already filled the second one. Add a worker here. Graduated from school. I had to be more attentive to um, the feed in case I did get immigrants. Alright, do we have 120 yet? Ooh, we're so close. 
What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to close this real quick. Close it. And then reopen it. That way, um, by closing it, I force everybody working there to, to drop off their goods. There you go. 141. And that is a good way to get people to drop off whatever items they're currently holding when you need it. <laughs> you remember the first encounter with the airborne plague? 700 citizens. Wow. Um, fortunately, I've never had any, like, plagues completely wipe out my settlement. Because by the time I've had that, I've usually had the... The cure for it already unlocked? Where's the cure for it now? Pharmacy. There it is. Um, airborne disease. Oh, they, they renamed it to, um... Airborne disease. It had a different name. It had, like, um... The flu or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's still called the flu. But yeah, so, um, when you have these cures, you have to have the hospital. The hospital cures uh, tuberculosis and um, airborne disease. So, if you ever had, like, that coming up again, as long as you had a, a hospital with these two techs unlock, you'd be able to cure that and prevent um, an outbreak like that decimating your entire settlement. Or what I also like to do in case I don't have those yet, the police station, as I mentioned earlier, another powerful feature of the police station is banish people. So sometimes when there's a sick person and I don't have the tech for um, the cure, like say it's tuberculosis, I don't have tuberculosis cure yet. What I just do if I had the police station, just banish them and problem solved right there before any outbreak. Yeah, the police station, it's, um, it's an awesome, uh, alternative. Well, at least now you know. In case. In case it happens again. So, senior mine is being built. We have these three set up. Um, let's do the winery and the textile mill next. Um, how am I going to set this up? I'm doing those two next because just like how these were all five by five, um, the winery and the techs are six by six. So it kind of keeps things clean and organized. So let me see here. If I had five by five, one, two, three, four, five, then the row would go across here. So I'm just going to start kind of doing a Capri layout of what it's going to turn out to later. So winery here, textile mill here and that way i can fit three more five by fives here and then start building six by six this way whoops it's just the way i like to uh set up my thing so you just had to <laughs> you just had to uh, sit there and watch your population go extinct yeah, luckily I've never seen anything like that, but I can only imagine what that's like. You've seen all like the red icons there, just overflowing your screen and just everyone just starts to die. I've seen screenshots where that uh, airborne plague has like wiped out populations of over a thousand and they just set them back down to zero. I, I can't imagine like starting over <laughs> from that. That's rough. Gotta keep a close eye on the timber. I just saw that. Less than 200. Let's uh, get these laborers to cut down some trees. That should be enough. Oops. And, okay, so just waiting on that. And once I have all of these um, buildings basically relocated here, that's when I'm going to set up the delivery station to start taking in the items. Actually, let's just do that right now. Let's slow this out down just a bit. So I'm going to need some vegetables. So I like to do uh, like 250 at a time. So some onions, mushrooms, pumpkins, and tomatoes. All of that is for the veggie plant. I'm going to need cactus. I'm also going to need flax for the textile. Cactus for the medicinal. 
coffee beans for the coffee. I'm gonna need oats. Do I have oats? No oats. Unfortunately, as we know, um, if you don't have the item in the inventory, you're not gonna see it. Oh, wait. You're not gonna see it in the delivery stations or supply stations. I just got five, so let me double check that right now. Oats, there you go. They really should have all the items here. Or at least a feature to click to show unowned items in case you don't have it. Instead of waiting for you to get at least one. It's kind of annoying. So you got oats. So yeah, so wild vegetables, onions, mushrooms. Oh, water. I think... What do you need water? Oh yeah, the, the coffee and the... Um, and the winery both need water. This one I'm actually going to do 125. The reason is since water uh, weighs two units and this is just one, it's, it's double the weight. So if I was to do 250 water, it actually would have, it actually weighs closer to like 500 units. So to keep this closer to like 250, I'm just going to put uh, 125 of water. That way it's like kind of easier for, that's just the way I like to set up my delivery stations. Um, like every unit here, it's like 250, so it's very easy to count. Like if I had four, that's a thousand weights, you know? All right, so beer, let's remove that recipe because we don't have wheat yet. And um, textile mill, get the linen back, get another worker. Get another worker here too. And that's most of the production buildings. Whoops, didn't want to delete this one just yet. Alright, so yeah, so that's the textile mill we can get rid of. And the winery. <laughs> 50 people survived and you had to shut down pretty much every building. Yeah, I can only imagine like what that must be be like so you have all these buildings that were operational and then you have to just shut down because all no one's there to fill up the jobs how how do you recover from that like do you just wait um for more immigrants to arrive like i was so curious like how do you come back from losing 700 people from just getting 50 people how do you come back from that Uh, the senior mine is ready, so let's put this back to coal. And, um, there we go. And now we've, um, upgraded our, our first mine to a senior mine, so level two. So, back to 100% inventory, so that thing should last us a while. Just had to go back to bare minimum and wait for kids and immigrants. I mean, I imagine because you had so many homes, I, I imagine you had a lot of empty homes. So your population probably expanded like very, very fast because the moment the kids became adults, I imagine they were able to move out very quickly and start families. So I imagine it wasn't that bad um, to come back from that. Like just the kids reproducing and uh, immigrants, huh? Okay, so textile and winery. So pretty much we have relocated most of the things here to this area. Let's uh, finally open this up and let's fully employ this. And now, let me get something to drink real quick. And, um, this takes time some buildings are ready to go. Yeah. I imagine. Alright, and now we have our, um, people working at. So, let's see what he's getting. Alright, so, this guy's getting the, the vegetables from that storage near the river and then bring him back to the delivery station and... Another oh, hungry, they're gonna eat. Basically, it's operational. So these people right here 
um, for now, they're going to be just going to whatever store just has these items and start placing them in. As you can already see, we already have vegetables inside, onions inside, mushrooms. And then these same people are actually going to be taking these items and then delivering them to um, these uh, production buildings directly. Hopefully we can catch that at some point. You can see the, like, the lines of uh, where people are going. And it looks like people are actually... Mm. Looks like people are still like just bringing items in. But that's okay. At least it's working. Before I forget, let's add the other items that we just produced. So that's beer and linen. I want those to be able to go here. So, beer. Check. Oops. Linen. So, yeah, this storage yard is exclusively only for um, the items that we are pretty produce here. And it's working. You know, we have coffee here. We got the medicinal powder being stored here. Um, so, so far, everything is working as intended. It's a little rough. It's, it's just a new um, production area. So, yep, linen just got dropped off there. Perfect. Um, so let, now let's move the advanced tailor and ooh, I totally forgot that um, right now there's a, a spring event. I just caught this out the corner of my eye. Um, we got these little lanterns. Um, so yeah, as a part of the, the spring event, like these little lanterns are going to be floating around the river and they give you like random uh, drops. So citizens were attracted by the beautiful lanterns on the river and found paper notes with riddles and new year wishes hanging on them. Try to solve the lantern riddles or collect the paper notes with riddles. So there's two options here. Um, if you try to solve it, like you'll just get a random um, seasonal drop. Like either fireworks or dumplings is what I've seen that I can think of off the top of my head. Or the other one, paper notes, you will get one paper note. And you can use those to sell. But if you collect a hundred of these, uh, there's an achievement to get. So... I don't think I'm going to be able to get a hundred in this stream, so I'm just gonna go with the with the lantern riddles for now. Hopefully, we can get a good um, random item to sell. Some citizens managed to guess the lantern riddles and won a reward. Oh, rice cake! Let's make sure this is banned. Um, I think that's a fancy food, rice cake. Oh, or is it not? Okay, am I blind because I did not see rice cake? Rice cake. Don't tell me it's a raw food or am I blind? Do I not see the rice cake? Last option, simple food. Last option, simple food. Oh, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't... um. I didn't see it. My bad. Rice cake. You know what? Since it's, it's, it's a simple food, I'm so debating. Because, like, a part of me wants to um, sell it because out of habit. But then I'm like, I have enough silver. I don't need to sell it. They can have it. But then I'm like, wait, I'm trying to level up Lorenzo. I'm trying to le level up Ren Lorenzo, and this is free stuff. So I'm just going to keep the rice cakes, and I'm going to... Try to be on the lookout for the lanterns, and hopefully by that time I have like a lot of random seasonal stuff, and I can just sell them off in bulk, and we can try to get Lorenzo to level three for those uh, hardwood pastures. So, if um, if you see one of these lanterns floating down the river and I miss it, you know, as, as long as you don't spam it, but Make sure you remind me on, on the chat. You'd be like lanterns or something, even if it's capital letters. Um, just make sure I don't miss these. This is free money for now. Oh, and we just got another random event, the regular one. Uh, tailors in town sorted out the leftover scraps and some old clothes that could no longer be worn in the store. Although they could not be made into decent clothes, Tailors could still reuse these materials and make simple clothes or backpacks. Oh, backpacks. Let's uh, 
Let's get some backpacks and sell those too. Um, I think backpacks are already banned. I feel like I've already uh, sold these before. Oh, I haven't. Let's um, let's go ahead and ban these items just in case I do get them. And an, an administrator term expired. Let's also do that. Oh, the warmer weather one is gonna go. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, we have enough to reappoint. Let's see what our other options are first. Um, accidental death rate of citizens, 50%, and livability proficiency. Hmm. Or we can just keep them for uh, 5,000. Livability. Let me, which one's livability again? You get citizens max vitality, which means they live longer. And stamina. Oh. Max stamina plus 10% does mean they get to work a little longer before they get tired. Mm. I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for uh, the free proficiency level here anyway. So let's, let's do that. Livability proficiency. Tiffany. And there you go. Oh, merchant ship. I caught it just in time. Wow. I am... It's really hard to, like, multitask so many things at so, so much. Alright. Um, luckily, even if I missed it, I don't think there's anything here I would really would have wanted. Like, gold, sand, silver, ore. I don't really need any of these. Like... Iron tools, if if one was running low on tools, that actually would have been nice, but no, we're good. We're good on tools. I just dismiss that for now. Okay. Um I'm gonna get these houses built since the delivery station is already kinda up and running. And that'll also increase our population a bit. Let's build these real quick. <clears throat> Hayes asks, when do you start producing shoes and baskets? Um, that's also on my to-do list. <laughs> um, the sooner the better, you know, act so... I probably was going to do it on a previous episode. Um, to produce shoes and baskets, baskets, you need the knitting workshop, which I already have. So, technically, if I try to remember, it's on the list. I... I do want to start producing shoes and baskets. Um, shoes is to... Inc I think shoes does uh, walk speed increased and reduces um, uh, injuries that workers can have. And baskets uh, allows um, settlers to hold more goods. So I usually do this when I have the knitting workshop set up. Um, and reeds. I'll probably have to unlock reeds. I don't even have reeds set up, but like whenever I get the, uh, build some reeds on like the side, uh, it's usually when I start building uh, shoes and baskets. Hopefully, maybe by this episode, I might try to go for that. But it's definitely on on my to do list on things I want to do. Uh, need baskets for pasture upgrades too. The pasture uses um, baskets. Um. This master is showing um, just iron tools. I think um, I remember the gatherer's hut uses um, the basket and increases work efficiency by ten percent. Or maybe is is there another pasture? The corral. Um. I don't even think the corral. I think the corral was also. Um, iron tools, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I know they changed a lot of um, upgrade materials, but yeah, uh, baskets are a useful thing for um, remodel upgrades. Yeah. Okay, the houses are built. We have a couple more left to go: the smithy and the advanced tailor. So let's do those. I think. So this spot right here, I'm, I was actually reserving this spot for this uh, 
supply terminal. I actually want to relocate this uh, supply terminal uh, closer here. So, so a little recap here. The supply terminal is is a building you can use to bring items in to the building. So um, these porters right here, what their job is to do is to find um, the resources that you tell it to look for. Um, they will find, uh, they will look for these items um, in whatever uh, storages they can and then bring them back in. And then anybody in need of those items can take them from here. So what I want to do, I like to pair up the supply terminal with my delivery station. Because my delivery station, those people who work here, again, they have to find all of these items on their own. Like vegetables, some of them are like placed over here. Yes, wild vegetables, onions, the delivery uh, workers have to walk all the way from here down to this uh, storage yard. Then bring it all the way back up here and then, you know, bring them to the vegetable plant. So this distance is a little too far. So that's where the supply terminal comes to handy. These guys, if I place them like in this area, they will look for, let's say, the vegetable, for example, if I select that, they instead will get the vegetables here and bring them back in here. That way, the delivery station workers, when they need these items to bring it in here, instead of walking all the way to this storage yard, they'll just get it from the nearby supply terminal. So. I'm going to do that real quick. If that did not make sense, please let me know and I will um, try to elaborate on that a little slowly. Because I know that's like, it's a lot of information right there. These uh, logistics buildings can be weird and complicated at times. But that's okay. Cut stone. Do I have enough cut stone? Hmm. If I don't, I'll just remove this one just so I can get the cut stone back from it. That's the radium thing crown. Okay. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. Um, if you recall from earlier in the stream, this veggie plant that I had down here, um, on one of the years, it was only it only produced uh, 700. This year, this thing is already at 1,100. So look how much we're getting with like just better um, efficiency here with the delivery station. Now that... Uh, I didn't even increase how much pumpkins or vegetables are coming in, but the efficiency here is just coming from that these workers are no longer have to go get these items themselves. The um, the deliverers here, they're the ones um, transporting goods, as you can see. Oh, this one right here. This supplier is taking cactus to this shop and refilling. So that was really cool cute that we got to catch that so as you know as i had this built these people oh there it is this one right there just refilled the um the vegetable plant with pumpkins so now that these workers are only worried about producing and these guys are delivering items for them look how much the efficiency coin up 1300 1300 is here so just by that just a simple addition of a delivery station is already increasing how much look at that 1300 um in one year so logistics this it, it's it's a good way to increase the efficiency and how much your uh, settlement can produce at a time and there you go <laughs> my logistics video is super helpful um <laughs> thank you um I'm glad it's 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 helpful. It is a very complicated um, system, and it's it, it's it's kind of hard to explain. So I'm really glad that like it helps people. So thank you. Um, oh, it helped you too, uh, Interiors. Um, I'm glad it helped both of you guys out. Really, I I feel like it's when I first started playing this game, 
Astrid. Um, she's not currently here with me right now. Um, she's been appearing in the chat. But Astrid, she's the one that taught me how to use logistics. And once I learned that, it was just like a moment, you know? Like, it just everything made sense on how much more efficient you can get out of your, um, your production buildings. Because I was struggling to like feed my people my first settlements i had like countless farms to like feed everybody and then she's like has a small amount of farms but like she's using simple foods and but using logistics to make it all work i was like yo how are you doing this and then she finally explained it to me i'm like yo so and then i'm just passing along the information oh hi sir reginald helped you a lot as well i had no yeah so I'm glad it's it's this game doesn't really do I wish the tutorial had like a logistic section for um for the game because logistics does I feel like it needs a little more formal in-game training because it's it's not easy but once you get it once you get it you can like start chaining different um buildings and stuff which reminds me this thing is done. So, my complaint I have with the uh, supply terminal is it only has two people here. And one thing I've learned that it's not enough to um, have only two people bringing items in. I wish, and I hope, you know, they increase this to at least four. Um, so, we got to be kind of very careful on... You can't put too much, because if you put too much, those two workers are going to have a hard time getting all of the items. Um, so, I was really um, using the example of like vegetables and um, tomatoes here, because those um, items are bring, brought in by the gather hut, which drops them off here. This is pretty far. So, I'm going to use the items being pulled into here and have them stored into this uh, supply terminal. So let's do that. Um, wild vegetables, 250 again. Then onions, 250. Tomatoes, 250. Mm. Anything else that's being produced there? Onions, tomato, wild vegetables. A little bit of oats. I'll do oats then too. Um, my production areas are so over-engineered. There is no such thing as over-engineered logistics. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, some, like, Thunder Mask 5 was the kind of game where, like, there's no end point. There is always something that can always be improved. Like, no matter how big the settlement is, you can always break down every production chain and just be like oh it'd be more efficient and if i can move this over here or add a transfer station here so i totally get that um over engineering there's no such thing it just it just means more efficient <laughs> you have five small um, delivery stations covering four buildings i in one of my earlier settlements i had something like that too where i had a large delivery station covering most of the buildings and then i had two smaller uh, delivery stations covering like some of the corners of this area so it's like delivery station in the middle and then smaller ones covering all the same buildings here and i had another one with like triple uh delivery station set up so no such thing as too much logistics <laughs> okay so my supply terminal is working and um, so we have a couple items in here for now. So that's nice. Now, um, the delivery people, they're called suppliers. Now, when they need to get um, these materials to bring in, like wild vegetables, now they don't have to go all the way down here. They'll just get them from this area. I wonder if we can catch that. Oh, yeah. This guy right here. He just entered it. I got the supplier, just got the wild vegetables from this building, and he's going to bring it back inside. Sometimes I like to do that. Like, I like to just follow around um, some of my logistics workers and see where they go. Oh, this guy's probably going to bring him back to the, um, the veggie plant. Yep, just made the delivery. 
and then goes back. Oh, that's gonna go to the winery. And look at that, just logistics, just working. <laughs> working as intended. Oh, got some more items from the supply station or supply terminal. Refill it with um, wild vegetables. Look at that. <laughs> that never gets old. Oh, carrying items. See, now this one failed. Now they're going really far. This is what I wanted to avoid. I wonder what they're going to go get. Mushrooms. Did I not have mushrooms selected? Oh, I, I never picked mushrooms. Well, there we go. Good thing I watched them do that. That way I caught my mistake. Yeah, following them does reveal a lot. And that is how you learn that floors don't give the speed buffs. That is very unfortunate. I really hope the devs change that. Like, um, let me slow this down. Oh, it's already slowed down. Um, so you go to roads here and there's floors. You can do like stone floors and it, you know how like the buildings are on grass? You can actually change that to be on like, um, an actual road, like stone or jade or whatever, but it just, decorative unfortunately it doesn't actually provide a speed bonus like when they cross uh, in between the roads diagonally uh, they will slow down even if the roads are in place so yes i wish too that the roads or the floors gave a speed boost as well when is the time to start upgrading houses and adding a retirement home um when do i i, I don't I don't even know when I, um, I go really, really far with just standing standard homes. I don't even recall when I even upgrade these. I think I upgrading these, I upgrade these probably when, um, I probably need the stress reduction because upgrading homes, all it does is it gives you more room for families. So I guess like if you're running, if you're running low on space and you rebuild the homes, um, the new one's gonna have, like, more capacity for family, so it probably you can probably upgrade them when you need, um, to expand your population, but you don't have much room more to do that. Or, I just do it mostly for decorative reasons. Really. Um, and the retirement home, I put that much later, honestly. Um... I, <laughs> one thing I do, and this is, it's the main reason why I want the police station, is I actually ban my old people from living here. That's my, that is my solution to the the population spikes that I was talking about earlier. How, see, what happens is old people they don't reproduce. So when I notice that I don't have a, like a lot of kids left, um, that means like a lot of the homes are already. Like this one right here, it, it's a full home. And since uh, these kids are still living with their parents, they can't start their own families until the, the parents are not there anymore. And you can either just wait for them to pass away, but then sometimes the, um, they will get so old that um, they won't have their own kids. So old people is kind of a, a problem in this game. So what I do is I just fix the problem from the root. And I just banish old people. Um, I start doing that when I get like immigrants. And I get so many. Oh, immigrants are coming. So when I have like so many immigrants that's like I don't have enough homes for every every person. Um, I start just making new room, not by expanding homes, but by getting rid of the old people. <laughs> I know it sounds mean, but I do that. <laughs> All the old people from their homes that like that they live by themselves without kids, they get banished banish all the old people to make room and they'll start having kids and um the population will will pick up again it's a little cruel but that's my method that i do it hopefully i get to show that in this video um replace the soybean oh uh thank you for reminding me about the administrator um Oh yeah, replace him since um, that one cannot be reappointed. Oh wow, we got the warmer weather guy back, Abbott. 
interval between citizens procreation 10 percent. so this one is they um they reproduce faster um hmm. you know what since my settlement is still growing i think i do want to encourage um a higher population so i'm gonna go with uh erica here for um interval between um citizen procreation minus 10 percent. so it should be more um more frequent that I'm having kids here. So let's confirm her. And again, thank you for reminding me to replace the um the administrator. And interesting about this person, I know that I'm alone. Beeline straight up. I beeline straight to apartment. Um, Quintarius, do you mean the um the luxury apartments or um these regular? It's called interim housing, but they used to be called apartments um before. Okay, so what's going on here? Oof. Got sidetracked by a lot of things, but that's okay. Thank you for the the comments and questions. Okay, so citizens here. I moved to supply terminal. That thing's partially functioning. Um, advanced state. Oh, that's right. The tailor to smithy. Let's relocate that one next. Um, production. Or smithy. Uh, so since, since this one is five by six, I'm not gonna put it here. Kind of, it's gonna mess up that little grid that I have. Um, I'll just do it along here. Um, smithy there, and then where's the advanced tailor? They're right next to it since they're both um a length or a width of five tiles. So that fits nicely here. Luxury apartment. Less places for the marketplace, people to hoard food. Less places for the marketplace, people to hoard food. Huh, interesting. You're right. I never thought about that. Um, Quintarius, notice if you have a bunch of apartments, technically it's like less food distribution because all of these houses right here, like the more houses you have, it's like the more houses Um, all the marketplace people have to like cover and especially since it has a delivery uh perk where these vendors actually have to go and deliver these um like things like food and fuel um to each home if you have them bundled up in apartments that's technically less places to go so that's pretty a smart strategy i like that every time you had issues with starving it was because you had a handful of small houses and they were hoarding it all yeah the more houses you have that means it's the food and all that is getting divided further down where it's just an apartment i can see how the benefit of an apartment um they can gather more in a single location for more settlers to use at a time never thought of it that way i learned something new today <laughs> the only thing about um the the luxury apartment though is that they can only have one kid though so it's kind of like a population control in itself too. But if you're trying to go for um, to expand your population, maybe the luxury apartments, even though it has that benefit of less places to cover, um, there's a drawback that they won't expand your population as much as like a regular house or a villa that allows you to have up to like two or, or even three kids. Silent, how are you doing? It's been a long time since I've seen you around. Thank you for joining. Alright, you got the smithy back up. And the advanced tailor. Let's get rid of this one. And down the jacket. Let's remove the cotton. Recipes. Add a second one, and there we go. That's basically all of the production buildings that I wanted to relocate. So now it's rough, but this is our current little um, production district. All of the buildings I had all scattered around on the uh, outskirts are now all centralized here. And before I forget, 
gotta tell this thing to accept uh, down jackets and uh, iron tools. And look at that. This little storage yard is also working as intended. All of these people drop off their goods on this nearby um, storage and quickly go back to work. And only they can use it. Nobody else, no other items can put um, be put in here to oversaturate this. Like no, no crops, no water, no anything. If it's if it's not specifically told to be in here, no one else is gonna use it. So everything's working awesomely. Um, this seems like a little late stream than usual. I actually did go back to my um my first schedule. On my time, I used to start at 7 o'clock, which is um, when I started today. I wanted to do... Um, I switched to 6 o'clock, so it's earlier for other viewers. But it's really hard for me to be on time with that. E even at 7, I was slightly late. So, it's... This actually is the soonest that I can do it. I wake up very late. I woke up at 1 p.m. <laughs> or 13 o'clock, um, depending on which clock that you use. So I wake up very late, <laughs> so 7 is like the earlier so I can um, handle all the things I have to do through the day and set up for a stream. Oh, Contarius said before, um, fancy furniture or the administrator will allow more kids. That is true. That is true. We got immigrants here. Let's accept them. I can see why I switched to automatic uh, admission uh, in my whenever it was I did that, but I also realized that I don't want my um, population to just keep going, growing and growing because, you know, I'm going to have to more mouths to feed and I haven't been expanding my food in a while. I'm kind of just going, using what I already am producing and then just processing that into like better stuff. Um, once I've, once I've, um, built a couple more things, that's probably when I will, um, expand further, um, on my farms, which I do have plenty of space to do that. Alright, let's slow this down and see if I can, um... <laughs> people actually use the 13 o'clock. I, I, I don't know, some people, some countries do. I mean, I'm an American, we just use the standard uh, AM, PM over here, so... Just trying to be inclusive here. Um, but yeah, thank you, Silent, even if it's just to pop in and say hi. You know, it's nice to see you around. Okay, so... With the delivery station, so I have this, checking my to-do list. Delivery station is uh, complete, I upgraded the mine. I haven't got the police yet. Um... Stone roads, yes, I actually did put that in my notes. So, now that, like, the population or the layout is kind of expanding just a little bit further, um, upgrading your roads to better quality really does help you out with, um, with the increased walk speeds. So, like, all these uh, distances that, you know, my logistics workers or all my production workers have to cover, um, without actually changing anything, you can still speed things up just by simply making the roads let them travel faster. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. Since I don't have my own quarry, um, the way I get more uh, stone for stone roads is to buy them. So let's, this is going to be a nice uh, opportunity for us to sell the, um, the other stuff I was getting from the random event. Just might as well. Um, so that's at times two. Let's buy construction material stone. I think I can do up to 340. Yes, there you go. It's a full, a full load right here. 2000. And we are going to sell all the other stuff. Um, rice cake. How much do I have? 99. 99 rice cake. Wow, rice cake does not even get you anything. <laughs> I thought I was going to get a lot more for a rice cake. I'm not even going to bother uh, selling that. 
Y'all can eat that. <laughs> it only gave me two silver per rice cake. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I had the backpacks. I remember that. There it is, backpacks. 300 of those. That's better. Um... And we have a lot of iron tools again, so... Let's sell... 400 of those. <laughs> Terry, I started building an alternating grid pattern so people can live near the work. Now mix in a few luxury housing districts. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different, um... Layouts you can do. That's a nice one, alternating grid pattern. As long as, um, as long as homes are near production and storages are near production, how you mix and match all of that is completely up to you. So it's really interesting seeing like different people's layouts. So that'd be cool. Oh, that's cute. All right. Um, YouTube probably can't see that, but on my Twitch chat, I see that my little bot actually is working intended as intended putting the discord link in there. Awesome. Alright, so backpack, iron tools. I think that's all I can sell at the moment. That's probably what I'm going to do next. I'm going to um, set up the the pottery shop. And so, backing it up. We can get that thing started. Six people. Should be enough. Insurance. And farm. <laughs> silent you think this uh, UI is weird I think it's better I think I know it's different from the one in the beta but you know I called it that we're gonna get used to it we're gonna get used to this it definitely had a lot more color than the last one I like the text grain um, for the tech trees this thing got a lot cleaner it used to be very very bright and overwhelming but I'm liking this one a lot more it's it's easier on the eyes. I like I like the softer um, color scheme going. All right, so let's um let's get that um sorry um let's get that porcelain production going next. Give me a second. All right, so. The pottery here, um, you can get that from the trade. Uh, tech point. It's going to require some clay, stone, and timber. Oh, um, another event. Uh, Mysterious Merchant. Oh, this guy came came before. A Mysterious Merchant, dressed like a foreigner, came to the settlement and hogged his goods to the citizen. Uh, here he, here he. Uh, 3,000 silver coins for the 200 special medicine. Buy them or miss them. Um, we are going to buy them. And then we are going to flip them. Where's the... Let's close all of these tabs. It is household goods. It should already be banned. Special medicine. Oh, I always forget that special medicine cannot be consumed anymore and therefore cannot be banned. Before, um... Before in the beta, um, things like herbs and special medicine um, that was directly consumed um, by settlers for their health. And now it's not the case anymore. Now um, things like clinics have to um, use um, medicinal powder or special medicine to further boost the influence and effects of the clinics, which is... At first, it was kind of like weird, but now I got used to it. I think I prefer this better. <laughs> I like how the the merchant ship mostly came with uh, special medicine. Got cats, whiskey, tusu, wine. Nothing really I'm interested in getting, so I'm just gonna let it go away. Anyways, before I was interrupted by the event. Pottery, let's unlock this tech. Um... 
So to produce porcelain, I'm also going to need, well, I'm going to need a steady production of clay and refined fuel. So let's spend points in that too. So I already have the clay. So let's just get the refined fuel. So let's do that. And it is actually an awesome thing that I um I upgraded the mine because we're going to need coal again. Um, we're going to need coal to um, produce and to refine fuel. So I'm already seeing an issue here. This thing in the storage yard is almost full. Yeah, that's a lot of iron. I don't recall how much how I got all this iron. Thirteen hundred, but that is taking up a lot of space. Um, I'm gonna upgrade this. Do I have the cut stone? If I was to upgrade this, I don't have the cut stone to upgrade it. Crap. And I already sent out the caravan. Oh no. Um, hmm. Okay. No problem. For now, I'm not even using this area, so I'm just gonna duplicate another 8x8. Eight eight. I'm gonna build that there just for now. Um, that way they can use both of these. Because I want to build the refinery. Where is it? it should be under ore. The fuel factory. I'm going to build this right here. So I can start producing um, refined fuel. And I'm placing it right here because um, my coal is being dropped off here. Because it's being, you know, logistics. <laughs> um, the mine is get gathering coal here, drops it off here. So, it makes sense to have the fuel factory nearby as well. And then when they drop off items, they're going to use the same storage. And that thing is almost full, so... I'm going to build this one as backup. When I get the cut stone, I'm just going to upgrade this one to a durable uh, storage yard. So, I can get all of that space back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, and clay, that's the other thing I need to uh, produce. Um, where's the clay? River, sand pit. Let's build this right here. So we'll move that little road. And then, we just <laughs> do something like that, I don't know. So now we're going to have um, clay coming from this area. And then we find fuel here. Let's not use timber. Let's just keep it at coal. Two workers and 250 refined fuel as production limit. So we're going to have uh, refined fuel, clay in a bit. And for the actual pottery itself, let me see, where is this? I'm going to put the pottery workshop in our um, production district that we just um, made. Might as well make use of this. But right across the um, the advanced mythy, since they're both uh, five by sevens. So let's do that. Let's do something like that. And then the delivery station, let's have it hold the other items. It was, um, first it was clay. Clay, let's have this hold, wait. Wait two, so I'd like to do 125 out of that. And until I actually start producing some refined fuel, I, it's going to appear in this list. Alright. Sand pit. Clay. Let's cap this at um, 500. 500 clay. Then, once all of this is set up, we will have... Um, we will be pr producing porcelain and we'll be using that to sell as a trade item, so not only we can get money, but we can also start leveling up um, Lorenzo a lot faster. 
I've noticed I have not gotten a traveling merchant. All stream yet. See, this is exactly why, like, I know I got very lucky in the past episodes, and it looks like my luck is starting to wear off a little bit. I haven't seen, or maybe I missed it, but I haven't seen the traveling merchant. No worries, it's not a good thing to be highly dependent of that. Your pottery shop, porcelain. Oh, we already have a couple um, refined fuel. And so let's add that to this list. Um, refined fuel. 250. In fact, since those items like clay and refined fuel is being produce in this area just like the vegetables i'm also going to put this on the supply terminal while we're at it so fine fuel 250 and clay 125. our caravan is almost back with the roads and then we'll start um upgrading some of these or at least the important ones that I know the logistics workers are definitely using. Okay, got some clay. And... Fine fuel coming in. <sighs> Let me see how long this stream has been running for. Um, wow, that was already an hour and a half. Wow, time really flies by with that. <laughs> um, let me look at my to-do list here. Um, porcelain. I still haven't got the police station yet. I don't think that's necessary. Um, I really expected... If I had, like, another um, batch of immigrants coming in, that definitely would have overflowed that. Like, out, uh, my interim housing, it's at 16 out of 24 people. Um, if I had, like, another set of immigrants coming, there wouldn't be enough room um, for all of them. So, instead of getting another building, that's when I do my little strategy of start banning all the old people. So, the infant house has uh, more room where the younger ones move out, have their own home, start their own family, get some more kids in here. But, um, I don't see immigrants in the timeline, so that might not be necessary. Um, what I can do here, I still have a couple more laborers. Let's further add some more buildings into this um, delivery station. I think I am going to do the um, either shoes or backpacks or baskets. I'm probably going to do baskets. So we're going to, now that we have pottery, I'm going to add um, basket production next. He's asked, how do you manage old people? Um, you can just banish anybody with the police station. You have to have a police station built and um, someone working the police. Uh, and once you have that, um, let me click on a random person here. Once you have that, um, there'll be a little icon here that just has like a, like a circle with a slash on it. That's to banish people. That will become available. And that's only when you have a police station. That's where you can get rid of people. At will. For any reason you want, you can just kick them out of your settlement. My cemetery is uh, full. Let's, um, let's replace this real quick. And the caravan just arrived, so... Now we have a lot more stone. Let's uh, upgrade some of these. So, I know the route from this place to the uh, by terminal can use an improvement. Let's do it all the way across. Um, from the delivery, uh, station as well. Let's upgrade that route this way too. <laughs> I don't even have, like, road going this way. 
Uh, let's connect that. And bring this down all the way here. Let's do this one too. I don't know. Like, I'm just upgrading the roads where I think could use some improvement. I just put them here. I know these guys have some walking to do. I don't want to run out of road completely, so I'm just going to see how much that uh, leaves me with. Um, so this thing is starting to produce, which is awesome. I have it set to, well, not 5,003, just 500. <laughs> Alright, it's 500 porcelain. Um... You can give it another worker. Two workers. And then these guys living. Uh, sand pit. Looks like it's doing okay. Um, the fuel factory already reached its limit. <laughs> that was fast. Um, Alright, we'll just leave that as it is. So, there we go. Um, once this thing, once we have like a nice batch of uh, porcelain, we'll uh, sell it in bulk to Lorenzo. Level him up. And, um, let's see here. Let's do, let's do the reed so we can start getting on the basket production. Make a reed field. Mm. You know what? Um, hmm, let me see. Reeds are here. Yeah, that works. Right there. And something like that for now. Add a clay. Bedding is a great trade item early game. Um, what produces bedding? I don't remember off the top of my head. Um. Bedding here. Oh, the bedding shop. Feathers, wool, and cloth into bedding set. Oh, that's interesting. I actually never considered um, doing bedding as a trade item in game. It doesn't even seem like it um, requires that much. Like, I don't know what the recipes look like. But I'm assuming it's like either linen or wool. Like I actually have most of this stuff. Linen, wool, feathers. Um, assuming it doesn't like need cotton or silk. Like technically I would have had enough um to do that. Worth a lot. Let me see, how much is betting? Let me slow that down. Um price. So Yeah, that's not bad. So it's about like 15. Carlos uh, buys it for 67. How much is porcelain? Wow, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> oh my god, betting is like... Yeah, that gets you so much more than... um Porcelain, wow. Thank you for that tip, I didn't know that. Um... I'm curious. I gotta see the recipes, though. There's gotta be a catch here. What is the recipe to bedding? I, I can burn a tech point for that. Bedding shop. Um, I like how I unlocked both the regular and the advanced bedding shop. Well, I do have the materials for just a regular one because I see this one has um, lamp oil. So let's just do the regular one. And it's a six by six, so we can just have it here. Thank you for that. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very curious. I didn't, I totally forgot about bedding. It takes a long time to make though. 
Hmm. Honestly, that makes sense considering like how much is worth. That has there has to be a catch to that. But if it's time, that's cool. If the um, if the recipes to make bedding is actually affordable, I will definitely go for that right now. Running low on timber. One of these episodes, I have to um, start doing the, um, the dense farms. Like I already have the, um, I already have the, um, the building for it. Just linen and feathers. That's awesome. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I look forward to this. Let's speed this up. Let's speed this up times ten. Hmm. So let me just check in here, and it's out of um, resources. It has two pumpkins. Flax. That is a lot of flax. So, okay, so this is what we're doing here. Um, because I want to produce um, more vegetables here, I kind of want to see if I can afford to um, switch um, or rotate what crops here. But something that I can afford to to lower production of. Flax here, I have 10,000 right here. How much flax am I even, pro how much am I overproducing? Whoa. I am only consuming about 350 flax a year and I'm producing like almost 3,000. I can definitely afford to take that off rotation. How about soybeans? I'm running low on food. <laughs> I just realized that. Whoops. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it makes sense. More people, a uh, population has been slowly growing. Um, hmm. Well, that should balance out on the next year since um, if I have more pumpkins going in to make more um, vegetable salads, that's more food being produced. How about oats? Oats is out. I would have to make another one for oats. Um, cactus has a lot. 9,000. And I know we're barely making any for medicinal powder. So I'm also going to take cactus, uh, the cactus out. And I'm just going to replace it with soybeans. Because I know we are kind of running low on food. So just to be safe. One thing I should probably do, I'm realizing, like, these orchards that I built way in the beginning of the playthrough, they're probably getting in the way. I should, at some point, I should move these orchards out to, like, somewhere on the side of here, and they just put dense farms. Because I do have room for three more dense farms. I should probably do that at some point. A uh, lantern. Are, are you saying lantern um, as a... As a way of, um, trade? Give me one second. Oh. Agriculture, blah, blah, blah. Do you need help? I don't even have rice to give you. Sorry. Use. Oh, lantern on the river. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. Wait, why can't I click it? Oh, <gasps> no. No. Did the game glitch? I I'm clicking it, I swear. Wait, is it still in my settlement? Yeah, it, it's still inside the bounds. Why can't I open this? Yo. I have an idea. Hmm. What if I quickly save? Um. Let me overwrite this and then just load. Save. It does not let me click on the lantern. Oh my god, are you seeing this? The lantern's not here anymore. 
I have never experienced this kind of bug. I've, I've, have you guys seen that where a lantern shows up and you can't click on it? Worst of all, if you try to like save and come back, it just disappears. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> At least it works. All right, you know. <laughs> that was so weird. Oh, I I'm glad the game gave me another one. That was weird. Um, solve the lantern uh, riddles. Blue pudding. Hopefully this one gets me a little bit more than the last one. How much does glue pudding? I don't want to be disappointed. 27. Oh, I guess glue pudding is fancy. Yeah, there you go. I can sell that one. And, um... I am it glue. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I, I don't know how to pronounce that name. But thank you so much for reminding me about the lantern. Even though it was a weird one, um, at least I, I would manage to get the second one and get the rewards. Thank you so much for the reminder. <laughs> You've had dozens of bad ones? Okay, I'm glad that I'm not the first. I mean, I'm not the only one that's had that. I've never seen that. Um, I was playing last night and all the lanterns I was getting was all working properly. So that kind of threw me off. Okay, so this is going to uh, rotate to um, pumpkins, and that's going to be uh, soybeans. Because I am kind of running low on food. And clothing. Oh, wow. Annual consumption, 200. Production is 650. Hmm. I'm actually consuming more clothes than I am producing. I know what I can do. Um, instead of building another one, another um, advanced tailor, what I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to use one of the uh, upgrade remodels that I was talking about earlier. It's a good... It's actually a good um, chance to show this. Um, one of the first ones that I like to do is simple... New employee. It doesn't cost a lot. It's just uh, paper and ink. With this, um, you are able to add an additional worker to a place. And even adding one worker actually helps out with production a lot. So, we'll go ahead and do that. And the bedding is complete. And it's, you're right, linen and feather. Wow, look at that. It sells for like roughly 64 silver. That's awesome. Okay, so we have a couple extra things to do. So, for the caravan, let's do buy. I'm gonna buy some paper. Um, it's 50, 50 paper per upgrade. So I'm actually gonna get 250, just so I can have, with one purchase of this, I can do up to five upgrades um, in case I need more. So, ink. Let's do 250. Paper and ink. And, um... We are going to sell those puddings. And the special medicine. Awesome. Um, and a merchant ship has arrived. Don't want to miss that one. Let me see here. Um... Can I use books? I can't use books. Um, books here. Um, actually, there's a tech here. Hold on. Under science. Um, uh, this perk right here, the book one, allows you to not just, um, produce your own books, but these could be, uh, consumed by your research academies. I'm not sure if it's research academy and just a regular institute, but they can consume books and get, like, an XP bonus. Kind of like how we're already doing with, uh, Paper and rope. Um, I think I'm just going to leave that for now. I already have a lot of things to do. Um, oh, another lantern? Or is that the same one?
Man, I am really bad. Astrid, I wish you were here so you can yell at me when someone says, um, lantern in the chat. Um, I read that a little late. Um, sand, iron ore. I don't think I need anything here. Gabe, so let's get rid of this. Anyways, back to this caravan. So I got the item. Let's sell the special medicine. 200. And then we had the glue puddings. That's 99. Um, how many porcelains do I already have? I already have 220. That's awesome. Let's sell those off. What else? Oh, have I pro I'm probably produced the bedding. I just did that. Bedding set 19. Hmm. I think I'm gonna hold on. F How much would I get? As like 19. I'm gonna hold off on the bedding just for a little bit. Like let's get a, a little bit more before we can uh, before we sell that. I don't want the price to adjust on those too soon and barely get anything out of it. Iron tools. Mm. I'll hold on to those. So I think. Iron ore. Building kit. I think that's all the things I'm willing to sell at the moment. Alright, so six members, insurance, and anything else? I should probably get some more stone. You know, so I can continue upgrading my roads. How much space do I have? About a thousand two hundred. I just do two hundred stone. Still got a small profit here of about what is that six six thousand so not bad not bad and all of this whether you're buying or um whether you're buying or selling all of this just gets turned into um xp to level up level him up so anything helps do that one and they're off what else would i was i doing Let's, um, let me take a look at the delivery station in this production area. Double check everything's working fine, so. There's no linen here. Linen. And then feathers. There we go. I wonder if there's other recipes. Oh, it also does some... Um, um, wool, so... Linen feathers, linen and... uh, I like how it's specifically wool and not a alpaca wool. So it actually really is a good thing that I have the sheep already bought um, ahead of time. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do um, bedding. So, very interesting. Persian tapestry. Persian tapestry. <laughs> probably even butchering the pronunciation on that. But that's probably from Rania. Oh, yeah. The delivery station working overtime. Oh, yeah. These... These guys have plenty of work to do. Honestly, I wish, like, the delivery station can have even more uh, suppliers. Because five is not enough. And that is not even to cover half of the district. It's that's that's just barely the bottom part. Um, and this thing should definitely be able to uh, employ more people, or maybe someone could mod that. that that'd be a pretty useful mod. Um. All right. So feathers, linen, feathers, linen. Um. 
Yeah, I never. I just remember I never did the thing for um the advanced tailor. So there's also wool. Wool and leather. Um, and I'll pack a wall. And that's for the uh, down jacket. Um, then I never did the timber or iron ore. Timber, since timber is worth five, I actually do 50. Because 50 times five is 250. Now, like every slot, you have 250 weight. Alright, so that's that. And despite all of these items, they are managing to keep um, a good amount of it in stock. Like, it does have refined fuel, cactus. It's doing a pretty good job um, keeping all of this stuff uh, well stocked. So, back to the storage yard. Um, did I do clothing and I did tools? Where's the tools? And then we just did bedding. So let me, let's add bedding into this. Bedding set. And I probably never add the porcelain. Um, and there we go. And that's why you do multiple small ones. Honestly, I did the multiple small ones too. And yeah, I totally see that. <laughs> Having uh, smaller ones does help it too. So having a delivery station and then the smaller ones even inside that same covered zone does help. At some point, like it's just the first one. We'll I'll refine this as um as this playthrough keeps going. Rebuild the tomb. Did I never do that? Oh, thank you so much. You are on fire on just reminding me all these things. Thank you so much. Rebuild the cemetery. Thank you. Thank you. You're the real one right there. <laughs> all right. Hopefully this, um, this caravan returns really quickly because I actually am running low on, um, jackets honestly another issue that probably was happening is since i never um put the materials for the advanced uh tailor inside the delivery station these guys were still had to go get the um the materials by themselves so that actually was a logistical issue on why um production here went down which was about to cause a shortage I simply forgot to put the items in the delivery station. So, hopefully... Um, the production of this increases now. Now that we have that fixed. Alright, what's my runtime here? And we're just at two hours, so... We got the reed fields. And that's been producing stuff over time. I never kept that. 500. Okay, so we have that. Um, the knitting. I'm going to relocate that. I'm going to build both of my knitting shops. <sighs> no, that wouldn't make sense. If rope... Rope can take um, reeds as well. Okay. What I'm going to do is relocate um, not just this... Uh, knitting shop. I'm gonna have another one for basket. I'm gonna build them in this corner Because if I put them into the delivery station, that's just putting more stress on all of these items So I'm gonna give these guys a break uh, Resources no production timber There we go. We'll do That fits nicely here And... Oh! Lanterns. More rice cakes. They can just eat that. 
Um, someone's starving. I don't know why they're starving. There's plenty of food. Well, at least uh, the crops have um, rotated, so we should have... Um... Oh, and we got a great harvest. So... Food should not be a problem. For the time being. I just realized that I forgot to buy cut stone to upgrade the storage yard. I should have done that. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, hmm. Well, as soon as this stuff um, gets completed, I'm gonna I'm prob probably gonna start wrapping things up. Um, I guess if there's any other like remaining questions, um, anyone has, um, feel free to ask right now, and I will try my best to answer your question. Rope. Yeah, let's do this to reeds now, and then this one's gonna be basket. people wait no wait hold on baskets oh i forgot the basket is um behind attack there we go basket unlock that recipe and then basket there we go so this one's producing ropes and this one is producing basket let's do that 50. And, and it started raining. And let's get rid of this one. Don't need it anymore. That is pretty much all of the production buildings that we had at the start of this episode. All moved to more efficient areas. Caravan's coming back. Just in time. Down jacket. <laughs> what is my stream schedule? Um, it's. <laughs> I really don't stream as often. I'm pretty sure I stream like once a month right now. Um, I only do um, I only do Twitch and YouTube part time. It's not really my. I have like another job, so I have like a lot of personal life that gets in the way. Um, you know, my actual job and you know. So I don't really stream often, often unfortunately. I wish I I wish I had the time to like do this at least. I, I would like to do this um every other week. Because this is fun, you know. But I, I I am known for going on long hiatuses. Like I have a video on YouTube that I've been working on. Uh, my next, in case you didn't know, I I have been working on that on and off. But uh, just personal life gets in the way a lot, so my schedule is pretty inconsistent. I do have a um uh Discord server, um. Right there, I actually post, like, a lot of updates on, like, if if I do plan on streaming, I do um, let my Discord channel um, know ahead of time. So, actually, like, yeah, joining my Discord would probably be the best way to, um, to keep in touch and keep up to date with, like, you know, my schedule and stuff. If, if you'd like, I can um, post the, the invitation link to Discord if you're interested. Immigrants just arrived. 14. Oh wow, that is just enough. 14. I perfectly have 14 slots left. Um, accept. Alright, um, let me get you the, um, the link. I know I have a bot that periodically, um, posts the Discord, um, Link, but it's been a while since that bot has done that. Let me go get that real quick for you. All right, 
That should be the link to um, my Discord server. I, I answer, like, questions. I actually am highly active there. Like, I don't do, like... Um, I may not stream often, but I'm constantly um, on Discord. So, right there, feel free to, um, to uh, ask any questions there. Whether it's the game or when I'm going to stream again. Um, what was I doing here? Right, the caravan arrived, so I have enough for another employee. So yeah, let's get this remodel going here. There we go. Now let's click on it again. Now we have three. Hopefully that should be enough to get, um... To get an, an, a net profit here. Because, yeah, we're running out of clothes here. Okay. Advanced tailor. Porcelain's going. And baskets are being produced. There you go. That's pretty much, again, I, I like having a to-do list. This actually really helps. I've covered um, most of the things on the to-do list. On the next one, I'm going to do um, shoes. I'm going to try to do shoes and definitely tofu production. And hopefully by um, keep trading all of this porcelain and all of this stuff to Lorenzo. Have we leveled him up to number two? Yes! We leveled uh, Lorenzo number two. We just need one more level on Lorenzo. And we'll get the hardwood pastures. Because that's the last thing I'm waiting for. I want to upgrade these to uh, hardwood. So I can start getting um, more meat production. And then I'm going to start processing all of that into uh, salted meats. And that's going to be another simple food. So hopefully in the next stream or the next episode, I will finally um, start getting more uh, simple food going. But right now, it's not doing so bad with um, the veggie salad. Actually, we can, even, we can even afford putting a third person here. So we already have a little bit of simple food um, being processed here. Just one building, a veggie salad. And it's doing a little... I guess it's kind of goes up and down um, with a thousand here hopefully now that there's three people and a more constant supply of vegetables this um this processing plant should be producing more simple foods now so yeah got the delivery station running got some bedding and um Thank you so much for the recommendation of doing um, bedding sets as a trade item. That was that was very, very, very helpful. And look who decides to show up at the very, very end. It's been a while, hasn't it, traveling merchant? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wow, traveling merchant. Yes. Hopefully we can get something good. Alright, can I get feasts? Either feasts or delicacies. If only um the user um bravery was here. They always call out feasts. Let's see what kind of fancy food we're about to sell. Fruit cakes. Alright. So that's a nice little thing I have already set to um sell off to get um to get more XP from Lorenzo. So, that's really funny. I'm glad I got the traveling merchant at the end there. Um, alright. I think that's it. Delivery station is working for the most part. I got to show you guys how this works. Um, delivery station is, you know, bringing items to all the production buildings here. Um, supply terminal is getting these items and bringing them here, so... These guys at the delivery doesn't have to walk so far. They'll get vegetables and other resources at the nearby terminal. And it's it's working pretty well. So I did that. Generally it still looks pretty roughly the same, but at least we added this little section this time. Um is there anything else I'm missing? Or I think I'm I think I'm set. Lantern. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being on the lookout for the lanterns. 
More rice cakes. Oh, they can have a little bit of happiness with that. And rice cakes is counting as simple food, so technically that is helping towards the simple food uh, consumption here. So, we have both health and happiness in the green. So, so far so good. Um, well, thank you everyone who joined today and thank you everyone in the chat for the interaction. That was, um, that was fun and I really appreciate the participation. Um, but I think I'm going to call it a night here. So, again, thank you everybody and, um, I'll see you on the next uh, stream or episode for those on YouTube. So, um... And, and you're very welcome, Sir Reginald. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you all for uh, for watching. <laughs> Have a good night or good afternoon, wherever you're from. <laughs> Bye.